My friends, why is Jesus baptized? Why is Jesus baptized? As we heard in our reading from the beginning of Mark's gospel a moment ago, the baptism of John was one of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. But if Jesus is the sinless Son of God as the church teaches, why then does he receive John's baptism? Well, in short, Jesus is baptized for two reasons that have nothing to do with the forgiveness of sins. First, Jesus is baptized because it is the means by which he is anointed as prophet, priest, and king. And second, Jesus is baptized in order to transform the baptism of John into what baptism is for you and I today, namely, baptism by the Holy Spirit. Now, I just said a lot in those two little sentences, so we're going to unpack them together, starting with anointing. If no one has ever clarified this for you before, I would like to do so now. Christ is not Jesus' surname. Right? That is not his last name, and he would not respond to you if you addressed him as Mr. Christ. Right? That's not a thing. Rather, Christ is a title, a status. The word Christ is how the New Testament translates the word Messiah from the Old Testament. Both of these words simply mean anointed one. Anointed one. So when we say that Jesus is the Christ, we mean to say that he is the Messiah, the anointed one. And as an aside, this is also why when you read your New Testament uh, and you go through our prayer book, you will sometimes see not just Jesus Christ, but Christ Jesus. Right? It's not a name, it's a title. So it's just Messiah Jesus, the anointed one Jesus. But what is an anointed one? In the Old Testament, an anointed one was any person who had holy oil poured over their head, specifically the holy oil that God instructs Moses to blend in the Torah in Exodus chapter 30, a blend of myrrh and cinnamon, sweet cane and cassia blended together in pure olive oil, and made with those ingredients the anointing oil was a sort of extract of Eden, the essence of the garden. Remember back to our reading from the beginning of the book of Genesis, how the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation. This is a familiar story. Over the course of the next six days in the poem, the Spirit would give order to the earth, filling it with all kinds of life. And then moving into chapter 2, of Genesis, that work culminates with the Garden of Eden and all of the botanical life of the garden is condensed into that fragrant holy oil, myrrh, cinnamon, sweet cane, cassia, olive oil, all that goodness in one little vial. It is that holy oil that is poured upon Aaron's head when he is made high priest to serve in the tabernacle. It is that holy oil that is poured upon David's head as he is made king to rule over Israel. And it is that holy oil that is poured upon the head of every prophet whenever the Holy Spirit desires to speak directly with God's people. And when Jesus is baptized... He is anointed as prophet, priest, and king, not with holy oil, an extract of the life of Eden, a mere symbol of the Holy Spirit, but by the Holy Spirit itself, the very source of the life of Eden. Mark's gospel is shouting at us the purpose of every prophet, priest, and king that has come before is fulfilled in this one Jesus. Just as the Spirit hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation, so too does it hover over Jesus as he emerges from the waters of the Jordan River. When Jesus is baptized, his identity 
as God's Messiah, his anointed one, is revealed. This, Mark wants us to see, is the ultimate prophet who will speak on God's behalf. This is the ultimate priest who will mediate between God and humankind. And this is the ultimate king who will bring about true justice and peace. So that's the first reason why Jesus is baptized. It is the means by which he is anointed prophet, priest, and king. But Jesus is also baptized in order to transform the baptism of John into what you and I know it as today, baptism by the Holy Spirit. You see, every baptism John administered was of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That is, until he baptized Jesus. As we heard in the lesson, something new happens when John baptizes him, right? The Spirit gets personally involved, visibly involved, in the form of a dove. Jesus receives not a mere washing of water administered by a human, but the real life-giving power of the Holy Spirit itself and so directly. And the same is true for all persons who were baptized in the name of Jesus following his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. It is all changed after that. When a person is baptized in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit now comes to dwell within that person's body, giving them the power to do the things that Jesus did. And this is exactly what we see happening in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning. Right? St. Paul encounters the disciples who had received the baptism of John, and they're living a life of repentance. Right? They're not in a bad way. It's just that they haven't received the Holy Spirit. But when they are baptized by St. Paul in the name of Jesus, that Holy Spirit comes to dwell within them in power, and they begin to speak in tongues and to prophesy speaking God's words to God's people as Jesus did. So my friends, that is why Jesus is baptized. Not for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus has no need of such a baptism. Rather, Jesus is baptized because it is the means by which he is anointed, the means by which the human act of baptism in water is transformed into the very action of the Holy Spirit. Which brings us to the subject of our own baptisms, the vows of which we will renew in just a moment. What I want you to hear this morning is this. Everything that we've said about Jesus' baptism is true of yours. Our baptism is a reflection of his. When we follow Jesus' example, entering into the waters of baptism, we are not merely repenting of our sins, although it is that. We are also being anointed by the Holy Spirit and thereby empowered to participate in the salvific work of Jesus, who is prophet, priest, and king. When we emerge from the waters of the font, we receive the laying on of hands and we are anointed with holy chrism. This is sacred holy oil that is consecrated solely by a bishop. We keep it in the church year-round for baptisms. What I want you to know about this vial of oil is that it's made with the same recipe that was given to Moses in Exodus 13. Myrrh, cinnamon, sweet cane, cassia, blended together in olive oil the essence of Eden. And when you and I are marked by this extract, the prayer book instructs that these words be spoken over us. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. That is the name that you and I belong to henceforth and forevermore. 
For us, the chrismation at our baptism, being marked by that holy oil intended for prophets, priests, and kings, is the moment in which the Holy Spirit descends upon us the very same way it did upon Christ Jesus. It is that moment in which we are joined to Christ's body, the church, to serve in a royal priesthood of all believers, the assembly in which the spirit of prophecy dwells in power. It is that moment when we are saturated with the waters of new birth, fragrant with the scent of paradise, in which God speaks over each and every one of us, declaring that we are his sons and daughters and children who are beloved and with whom he is well pleased. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen.